holding. The pin is actually quite nice. It makes a good starter fountain pin. And uh, I'm going to cut to the chase and sort of show you guys how to fill the pin. You can remove the cap of the pin by pressing on the uh, the mechanism there because it's an actual uh, friction fit cap as you can see. It's not a screw cap like a lot of fountain pins. Filling the pin is actually quite easy. All you have to do is just unscrew the barrel of the pin. It comes out. And as you can see here, it uses an aerometric converter filling system. And what that is, is there's a button right here that you press when you've dipped the nib in ink. You press that three to four times, sometimes more. And through that action, it will draw ink up into here. And there's a ink sack inside here, as you can see. Now I'm going to transition and show you guys how to actually fill the pin. Filling the pin is relatively easy. All you have to do is just get the nib section and the uh, plunger exposed. You dip the nib into the ink bottle as far as down as far down as it can go. You squeeze on the lever bar. As you can see on this one, it's starting to bubble and that's good because it's pressing out any air that's been trapped in the mechanism. You pump it about four to five times and then you check to see if it's filled up. Once you've pressed it four to five times, it actually helps to sort of shake the pin in a vertical position with the nib facing upwards. And that will allow for any ink left in the breather tube to sort of flow down into the ink sack, as you can see here. This particular pin I have has a little bit of a flowing problems, probably because I'm using a more waterproof-based ink. But with that, I can actually remove the metal protector lever bar sleeve entirely and I will soon show you that so uh, let me show you that real quick as you can see I've just removed the metal protector sleeve here and all it is is just a lever bar with a metal casing that's sort of been friction fit inside there if I can focus for you you can see this sort of lever in the center that uh, it works decently well but I'm gonna show you another way if since the lever doesn't completely move all the way down the ink sack I found out that there's another option you grip the ink sack with both of your fingers and you squeeze with the full length of your fingers and it allows for a way more efficient ink fill for this pin it's the same premise as before except just that the protector sleeve removed and you give it a several squeezes I'd recommend at least six at this point as you can see I'm just squeezing the ink sac it's filling up you can see there's a breather tube in there right in the center there and that helps draw up ink and helps prevent any mildew that might reside in the pen as a result of water but you just once you've done filling your pen you just wipe it off with a napkin or a, a reusable cloth to sort of get all the ink off the nib. You flip it upright with the nib facing up in a vertical position. And as you can see, since I've used, I've taken off the protector sleeve, it's almost completely full. And uh, that's a really efficient way how to fill the Wing Sung 233. The Wing Sung 233 actually makes a pretty good school pen. That's what I've been using it for. It's a, it's a, it got a good nib with quite a bit of flex to it. It's a long, the tines of the nib are pretty long as well, which make, makes it a good pen. As you can see here, the nib can actually be screwed off if you would just grip it between the section here. As you can see where it meets that uh, grip section between the orange uh, view window. window. You can just turn that clockwise and screw off the nib for cleaning or anything. I'm not going to do a full look on uh, disassembly right now, but this is just to show you guys how to fill the pin. If you have any more questions, just let me know, and uh, thank you very much. All right.